<clears throat> we can also use those, that equation for our handy dandy heat uh, equation. Um, to calculate the thermal equilibrium that two objects would come to, all right? So thermal equilibrium, that's what we're gonna calculate. All right, so that's a fancy way of saying that if two objects that are different temperatures come into contact, they'll eventually come to the same temperature, all right? So that is the temperature at which two objects would come to after the heat was transferred. All right, and so the next problem we're gonna do is gonna look like this, okay? You're gonna put a block of some metal that's at a high temperature into some volume of water that's at a lower temperature. The metal is gonna transfer heat to the liquid, the water, because it's at a lower temperature. That's how temperature transfers. It goes from the hot object to the, not temperature transfers, heat transfers from the hot object to the cold object which will actually explain why that always happens in thermodynamics. Wait for it, get excited. Actually, I should have said spoiler alert. We're gonna figure that out. Um, and so he's gonna transfer from the hot object to the cold object. Um, and we can use the equations, okay? So this Q metal equals Q water. This is nothing more than, uh, well, if we, no, I can't go green than light green. That's too much, that's too close. All right, so same thing as our system, all right, if we transfer heat, just heat, to the surroundings, we know, we know already that the change in energy of the system is equal to the change in energy of the surroundings, right? but they're opposite in sign, right? Something's losing 50 joules, negative 50 joules. That means the other thing's gaining 50 joules plus 50 joules, right? <clears throat> so if the only way that we're transferring energy is heat, the same can be said for heat. The heat of the system will equal the heat of the surroundings, but opposite in sign. If the metal, in this case, transferred 100 joules, it lost 100 joules uh, to the water, that means the water's picking it up. So this would be negative 100 joules. This would be a positive 100 joules, and a positive 100 joules times a negative is negative 100 joules. Okay, so that's how we, mathematically we can relate the heat. Now, what we're gonna do is eventually we're gonna solve for T sub F, because that's the temperature which they're gonna come to, after the heat is transferred, and so that's gonna be my final temperature, T sub F. So when we look at these uh, problems, when we look for thermal equilibrium and we solve for it, what we're gonna be solving for is T sub F. T sub F is gonna equal our thermal equilibrium for these problems. <coughs> Did I start the recording? All right. Okay. Man, I was, got worried for a second. Like, 
I'm doing all this talking for nothing. I mean, it's for you too, but I mean, really. It's... All right, so let's try this out. So example 6.3 says that a 32.5 gram aluminum block initially at 45.8 degrees Celsius is submerged into 105.3 grams of water at 15.4 degrees Celsius. All right. <clears throat> what is the final temperature of both substances at thermal equilibrium? So that's what we're looking for. We're going to look for T sub F. But for it's for both substances, okay? So essentially what we're going to have, we're going to have two equations, two variables, so we're going to solve for those variables. No, we're not just doing that. We're going to have two equations, but we're going to solve for T sub F in them because they equal each other. That's why we don't need two. All right. All right, so let's draw a picture. All right, so we've got a beaker of water. All right, and we got 105.3 grams of that water at 15.4 degrees Celsius. We're going to place a cube of aluminum in it a pretty terrible cube not gonna lie yeah i gotta i gotta work on this all right and the cube is 32.5 grams and of aluminum at what what's the temperature of the aluminum 45.8. What's going to happen? Since the aluminum is at a higher temperature, it is going to transfer heat to the water. Right? What's going to happen to the temperature of the water? It will go up or down? Up, oh, yeah, it's going to go up. What's going to happen to the temperature of the aluminum? It's going to go down because it's losing heat. And eventually they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. That's the thermal equilibrium is, and that's what we're going to find out. All right. <clears throat> so our, our equation is going to look like this. So we know that the Q of the system, doesn't matter what we call the system or the surroundings, but let's just say to the Q of the aluminum is going to equal the heat absorbed by the water but of course they're going to be opposite in sign. Aluminum's losing, so it's going to be negative. Water's going to be gaining, so it's going to be positive. But the numerical value is going to be the same. So all we have to do is break this uh, equation up and then solve for T sub F. That's what we're looking for. What is the final temperature, AKA T sub F? All right, so we know Q equals MC delta T. So Q of the aluminum, so it would be equal to the mass of the aluminum times the specific heat of aluminum times the delta T of aluminum. And that's going to equal the negative. We'll keep that out for a little while. times the mass of the water, times the specific heat of water, times the change in temperature of water. It doesn't matter. They're just going to be equal in value, but opposite in sign. So you can put the negative on the other side. But I already wrote it, and like you saw what happens when I try to erase things, and so I'm just I'm gonna keep it here. Don't want to go down that road again, unless I have to. All right. All right, but we still don't see T sub F, right? So I got to break this up just a little bit further. I got to break out that delta T. 
All right. So this is going to equal the mass of the aluminum times the specific heat of aluminum times T sub F minus the initial temperature for aluminum. <clears throat> the final temperature is the same for both, so I don't really have to label that. That's what I'm going to solve for. The initial temperatures are different. Aluminum started at 45.8. Uh, water started at 15.4. Times the negative of the mass of the water. Times the specific heat of water. Times delta T, which I'm going to break up into T sub F minus T sub I of water. Parenthesis, parenthesis. All right, so now you could do it a couple different ways. All right, you could just solve for T sub F right here. So rearrange the whole equation for T sub F and just keep it as variables and then plug in your numbers all at once, okay? What I usually like to do is I like to plug my numbers in, then start doing the algebra. And I can do some of the calculations along the way with uh, which has the bonus of if I pay attention to my units, which I know students love to do, um, they would cancel out, and so I'll end up with my final answer with the correct units if I did the algebra correctly. If I messed up on the algebra, I'll get some weird units. All right, so that's why I like that way. All right, so let's go orange. I haven't used orange a lot. I like orange, too. Yellow, I, I wasn't digging the yellow yesterday. I don't think I'm going to use that very often. Too bright. It's not my style. Okay. All right, so my mass of the aluminum, what is it? 32.5 grams. 32.5 grams. All right. Specific heat of aluminum, I got to go look that up. 0 0.903. Thank you. And the units are joules per gram degrees Celsius. Times. T sub F, I don't know what that is. That's what I'm looking for, right? That's what I'm going to solve for. Minus, what's my initial temperature? 45.8. Equals negative. I'm still going to keep that negative out for a little while. Mass of the water, what's that? 105.3. Specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Yes, I know that off the top of my head, not to brag or anything. I shouldn't brag about that at least. Times T sub F minus the initial temperature of water, which is 15.4. Thank you. <clears throat> all right so now let's start crunching some numbers all right let's take 32.5 times 0 0.903 i'll also take requests so if you want a specific ink color that you just want to see at that moment let me know as long as it's not yellow, we'll go with it. Purple? All right, purple's next. I also have to switch them up. So you can't just say purple and purple. And purple. I need it colorful. i got to follow along. All right, so what do we get when you take 32.5 times 0 0.903? 29.3? All right, what would my units be if I took a gram and multiplied it by a joule per gram degree Celsius? Joules over degree Celsius. Yes, the grams cancel out. So that's going to be joules per degree Celsius. <laughs> All right, so that's what I did. I took 
32.5 times 0 0.903. Now let's factor that in, okay? So we're going to multiply it by T sub F, and then we're going to multiply it by a negative 45.8. I'll do the first one. You guys do the second one. See, I'm helpful. Don't say I don't do anything around here. <laughs> I usually do, yeah. I usually, whenever I do a calculation and write down a number, I would do the stick fix. There's some people will tell you to do them all, remember how many decimals you have, and then try to figure out at the end. I think it's easier just to do them as you go. Don't run. Yeah, you'll get slightly different answers, but you get close. It won't. It won't make a big deal. So 29.3 times 45.8. What do we get? 1,341. 1,344. 1,341. Okay. Let me just clean up some things around here. All right, so 1341 with three sig figs would just be 1340. So no matter what, if you've got 13141 or 1344, hey, that's 1340. So it takes care of that. What would be my units if I took a joule per degree Celsius and multiply it by a degree Celsius? Joules. The degree Celsius would cancel out, and so I get joules. <clears throat> All right, so let's do the same thing on the other side, because that was fun. So let's take 105.3 and multiply it by 4.184. And hit me. Four forty point five. So go four forty one. What would be my units if I took a gram and multiplied by a joule per gram degree Celsius? Oh yeah. So I did that on purpose as a learning experience so it should be four forty what point six all right see that's how a good teacher teaches joules over degrees Celsius thank you I had three six figs on my mind from the previous calculation so that's what I'll blame it on all right, now let's take that 440.6 and factor it again. So times T sub F and then times negative 15.4. I'll do the first one. I'll wait for you. What do we get? 6,785. You have 90 with 366? Okay. And then we'll get what for units? Joules. All right. <clears throat> okay, so let's um, factor this in the negative. And I got a request for purple. Uh, 15.4. The 15.4. Yeah, the zero is pretty ambiguous. 
so that wouldn't count. If you really want to uh, be 100 percent sure, you could convert it to scientific notation. You could say 6.79 times 10 to the third, and that would rule out any. Um, that's probably what we should do. But again, I'm not erasing. What was the original number? 67? 85. So the 5 tells the 8 to go up. It's like, psst, go up. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to play that game. All right, so I'm going to factor in this negative and just rewrite it a little bit. So I got 29.3 joules per degree Celsius, T sub F minus 1340 joules equals a negative 440.6 joules per degree Celsius, T sub F, plus 6790 joules. And now I'm starting to wonder how I'm going to finish this problem all on one slide. With paper, I can always break out another piece of paper. That's what I usually use. Okay, now I'm kind of uh, a little stuck. All right. I could erase, but I want to keep it all the writing here. That way I can upload the notes with all the writing. And so you can follow along that way if, that, like, if you like that. So that's a good suggestion, but I don't. I don't want to do that. We'll figure it out. So when I factor in that negative, this becomes negative, and the negative times negative becomes plus. All right, what should I do now if I want to uh, solve for T sub F? I could open a blank slide. That's probably what I'm going to do. All right, so for this one, just the, the signs tell me. I'll just keep things simple. So let's add 1340 joules to both sides and add 440.2. Six joules per degree Celsius T sub F to both sides. Does that make sense? All right, so let's add 1340 to both sides and somehow turn that into a four. So plus 1340 joules. And let's add 440.6 joules per degree Celsius T sub F to both sides. Oh, hmm. There's buttons down here that do stuff. Ooh, if you didn't see something, oh, look at that. See, how do I get out of there? Oh, okay. See, I can pick colors a little bit easier down here. Like, oh, you want to see that cube? There you go. And YouTube is here I come. All right, so, hmm. Let's, and I didn't do it. Let's do this right. All right, so let's take this over here. So 29.3 plus 440, what do we get? 469.3, but I got to go to 469 joules per degree. What? Oh, 40, 40.6, I forgot the 6. Okay, so that'd be 469.9. So now, and this is so now that becomes four seventy with three sig figs. Okay. Oh yeah, you're right. I mean, of course, I meant to. Uh, so that's what four sixty. 9.9, .9? all right, equals what? Mm. Hold on, I forgot T sub F. Equals what? 
8030. All right, so now what am I going to do? Divide both sides by 469, and I'll just sneak this up here. Huh? Look at that. T sub F equals 8130 joules divided by 469.9 joules per degree Celsius. They told me. Okay, yeah, so it's uh, this right here, 6, 679, 6790 plus 1340. I don't think so. I think it's just 6790 with three sig figs. All right, so we got 8130 divided by 469.9 up in the right corner. That's where we're at. 17.3. Zero. Uh, so this is actually a sig fig that's zero, so that's only three. So 17.9 degrees Celsius. Oh, 17.3? Sorry. I've got this thing in my ear. I can only hear out of one ear. That's that's what I'm blaming it on. It's not the eraser. Seventeen point three degrees Celsius. All right. Well, is that degrees Celsius? Yeah. yeah. Joules cancel out, and one over one over degrees Celsius will give you a degree Celsius. <clears throat> all right. So that's the one thing that you can make sure you did all this fun algebra with uh, correctly is that you should end up for T sub F final temperature. You should end up with degrees Celsius. So if you kept track of all those units, and I know it's not fun, and it's not exactly you know. All that's straightforward, but if you keep track of those units every time you do a calculation, that will help you make sure you did the algebra correctly. Yes, question. So, as you were going about things earlier, uh huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.